But look at these things here. They, I mean, the Bears, they rush for 133 yards, uh, 214 total, 44 offensive plays to only 20 of the Eagles. And this is one of the things that the Bears have been, done well all year, no penalties. In fact, they're the least penalized team in the NFL. And Eric Kramer hasn't been sacked. And they have allowed the fewest sacks of the year as well. So things have been going pretty much their way. Witherspoon back deep. And Todd Sauerbrunn will kick off for the Bears. He's a guy you spent a lot of time talking with yesterday at practice. You saw whatever problems he's having. Well, I think he's just he's just a young guy. I mean, I think Sauerbrunn's probably going to be a heck of a kicker in this league in a couple years, but he's just a young guy. He said... Say some nice things about me today. I haven't had a lot of those things. Well, you said something nice. He's young. And he just kicked one out of bounds. Flag on the play. Well, I think the, the flag is that the ball went out of bounds. Did the ball go out of bounds, or did the Eagles catch it? And then go a step out of bounds. Christy Jones. That's what the officials are talking about right now. Gary Number Lane. Receiver caught the ball, stepped out of bounds, kick off out of bounds. Follow me at the 35-yard line, first down. Well, that's what they were talking about. You're correct. Well, here's the catch. Yeah, well, he was saying that he caught the ball and stepped out of bounds. So when he caught the ball, he was out of bounds. So therefore, the kick was out of bounds, and now the Eagles get the ball starting on the 35-yard line. So with that ruling, they picked up 15 yards. Sauerbrunn has that, has that look of confusion. He's not sure exactly what that means. Well, he's young, you said. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when he matures and gets a little older, he's going to be a heck of a kicker. But until now, he's a guy that drives his coach crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was a second-round draft choice. And some of the stories with him and Dave Wanstead are funny to us, but not so funny to him. Not to any coach. That's Waters, and he is knocked out of bounds by Jeremy Lincoln. Yeah, right, and uh, Ricky Waters has now carried the ball like five times for about eight or nine yards. Rodney Pete under pressure. Well, you see, he's been sacked twice, hurried twice. Knocked down twice. He's fumbled one time. And then there's another one we don't have on there where he was flushed out of the pocket by Flanagan, ran over the line, and got a penalty for throwing the ball after he passed the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers for the Eagles. What's the run? Hey. And the ball off to Charlie Garner. Ricky Waters or Charlie Garner? Waters. And nothing doing. And that's the thing that they have. To, I mean, they have to get Ricky Waters in the game. I mean, that's why they brought him from San Francisco. You know, he has to be, that's, you know, if you're going to have that kind of offense, it has to be Ricky Waters. And there's a guy Recognize who Ricky him. Waters admires, Walter Payton. Oh, sweetness. Uh, Ricky Waters would love to have a great game in front of Walter Payton. How could you not admire him? He said that he's the guy that he's always tried to be like. Three-man rush, Pete Scramble. Will not get up for a first down. Knocked out of bounds by John Mangum. That was a big play by John Mangum because if the if the Eagles get a first down there, then another first down or two, they're in scoring position. So that you know, you look at a play like that and you think, oh, it's just a tackle. He just knocked him out of bounds, but that was a big, big tackle. See, if he doesn't get him right there, Rodney Pete is going to get that first down. And of course, with the first down, you get a new set of downs and you know a new shots at that bear defense. Flanagan was shaken up on the last pass rush and now he's limp, limping off. You know, it doesn't seem like that long ago, it wasn't that long ago, that these two quarterbacks, Rodney Pete and Eric Kramer, were both in Detroit fighting each other for playing time. Hutton back to punt. Graham signals fair catch and made a heck of a catch. Right off. Right off the ground. 
So the Bears stop the Eagles' first offensive effort in the second half and still lead by 10. Many ways to enjoy Chicago. You've done some of that ice fishing, haven't yep. you, John? You can't beat ice fishing. Yeah, you dig a hole there in the ice, you make a hole, and then you then you just put your thing in there, and you just go up and down, and then you like catch that, fish. Seems like there ought to be some ways that I could think of that you could beat it. Ice fishing, well, I mean. Playing football. I mean, I would, I mean, you know, those guys are out there playing, but I'd rather be here, even though it's, it's 30 degrees, but you got that wind down yeah. there, too. So then you have that wind chill, and, uh, and I'll tell you, that guy there... Uh, He's feeling the wind chill because then you add the water to it too. So you add like, like degrees and then wind chill and then water on the lake. And you got to worry when you. That guy was talking to the fish. Got to start be concerned about that. That's Graham fumble. They got it away. And the Bears get it back. Timpson recovered Graham's fumble. That was a heads-up play by Michael Timpson there. Timpson is playing instead of Conway, who was shaken up earlier. But everyone is going after the ball here today. But on that one, Jeff Graham just got the ball punched out again. That's what they've been. But look how Michael Timpson gets in there. Yep. Really, he was fighting three Eagles for that ball. McMillan was trying to pick it up. You see, the ball is punched out right there. That's a tough thing. You know, it's not just getting hit, but it's those those hands and those, you know, punch motions knocking that ball out. Salah taken down by William Thomas as he tried to spin it to the outside. Lost the yard, perhaps. William Thomas, one of the guys from the Eagles that made the Pro Bowl this year. He's, he's more of a cover linebacker. In fact, Ray Rhodes was saying last night that, you know, he's really an undersized linebacker, and if you had to pick his best position because he has great speed and he's a great cover guy on the pass. But his best position may be a strong safety. Eric Kramer, 174 passes without an interception. That's a new pair record, the old record held by Jim Harbaugh. He's audibleizing now. Picked off by the Eagles, Romanowski. Bill Romanowski bounced off. And you just given that That's record, you just record. given about Eric Kramer's record, but that wasn't an Eric Kramer interception. I mean, yep. the Eric. I mean, it's going to count as a stat in an Eric Kramer interception, but that was a perfect pass. And we just said he'd taken every every snap of the year, and now he's down. Oh, that is a late hit. Look at that. Oh, that's after the play was over and everything. He was running off the field. Oh, I don't know that they saw that one. Mike Mamula. <laughs> Watch this. He's going to throw the ball. The play is over. Now watch this. I mean, he's turning. He's starting to walk away. Whoa. And he really got hit there. But what happens is after a quarterback throws an interception, now he's not an offensive he's player on anymore. He's on defense, and they always teach the guy to go after him. So that wasn't after he threw it. That was after the interception. Garner is the deep back. And Garner is hit behind the line of scrimmage by the Bear defenders. These Bear defenders have done a heck of a job on these Eagle running backs. You know, they came in here and, and you expected Ricky Waters was going to have a big day. Charlie Garner was going to have a big day. But, but this defense has really done a heck of a job. Here's the interception here. You see the slant? He throws the slant. The ball just goes, pops right out of him. Ro Romanowski gets the ball here. And now, now you watch what happens here. There's Pete the throw. Throw short to Carpenter, who caught it on the bounce. And the coverage. A report on Conway, by the way, the bear wide receiver, is that he has a bruised sternum. We don't know, nor do the Bears know, if he'll be able to come back anymore today or not. Well, they say that they, they had an X-ray at the halftime. The X-ray was negative, but as you say, they still don't know if he'll come back the rest of the day. Three wide receivers on third down. Bears showing blitz. 
Pete back to throw. Your man loose. They blitz. The pass is complete to Carpenter. Carpenter was slung backwards. They don't get the first down. Mark Carrier made the play and a good play. Another we, uh, we saw earlier where John Mango made a play. That time it was Mark Carrier because the, the, the Bears came after and the Bears came on an all-out full blitz. They completed the pass. Now you have to have that open field tackle. But watch this Bear blitz. They got the whole group up there. Now they have to play man for man. The ball is completed and Mark Carrier has to get the guy down now because there's no behind him. Hutton cuts deep. Landed in the end zone. I thought it did. And they'll bring it back to the 20. The way the Eagles were ganging around it, I thought maybe it didn't go to the end zone, but it did. 35 yard punt by Hutton. 17 7, Chicago. With John Madden, Pat Summerall back at Soldier Field, Chicago, where the home team, the Bears, leads by 10. And they have the ball, having just stopped an eagle drive. Hutton's punt went into the end zone. It's first and ten. Kramer's back at quarterback. Salam gets the carry to the 23. Gobea. I'll tell you, did that right side of the line, if you want to see some guys fire out, watch Jay Lewenberg and James Williams, the right side of that, that bare offensive line. I mean, th this is how you block. I mean, it's right here, and they just fire out, and you got to get moving here because this is where you're going to bring the ball. But watch that fire out. It's a double team. They get they get him going backwards, then they put him right on his back. They've been doing that all day. No, no, this is no. to throw it. Incomplete. A flag on the play intended for Keith Jennings. Zordich doesn't care for the call. Well, Kramer looks like he was okay. You know, yeah. after he threw that interception, he was really hit there by Mike Mamula. Like he was hit right in the head. And he had taken every snap. Pass interference. Defense. Number 36. All year Ball long for the Bears. Automatic first down. Zordich. Call for the foul. And he's still protesting. But you're going to see the play. Michael Zordich is number 36. He's going to come in right there just as the ball was thrown. I don't know. That's that's a tough one. I mean, he got there just as the ball got there. That was awfully close. Two tight ends. Kramer to throw. Complete to Jeff Graham again to the 40, the possession receiver. And he knows how to get open. And he just has a great feel. I mean, he has a great feel to for, for the zones to to you know where to find the hole in the zone and then once you find that hole in the zone to come under control and you see the first guys that he goes to instead of going to the quarterback he probably did that too but he went up to those offensive linemen and he said hey good blocking guys if you guys don't do that I don't get the ball down the field. Salam. Maybe a yard. Govea again on the tackle. Govea finished that off didn't he? Yeah. Well, that's one thing about Kurt Govea. If you're going to run the ball inside those tackles and you're in that short yardage situation and he can zero in on you, he is going to he is going to tap you. Watch him right here. He's he's reading the thing. See, he's looking at the fullback and the tailback. Then he has that hole right there. Take on the lead block, then come off it. And if there's still any movement, finish it off right there. Salam. Near the 30, about the 32. A couple short of the first down. Govea again on the stop. He's always been, even back in the days with the Redskins, when there was some doubt about him playing every down. He's been one of those guys who's always seems to be around the ball. Well, he's not a big guy or a real strong guy, but but he's 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 a playmaker. He just is a guy who is a good tackler and he has a good feel. You're talking about having a good feel. This Rashawn Salam uh, looks like he has an yeah. excellent feel. Yeah, look at his, his yak. In other words, that's yards after the first contact. 68 yards of his 118 yards. 